Introducing the Dell heat shrink machine. I'm going to go over how to make your own heat shrink machine using an old computer, um, some simple electronics kits, and uh, a little bit of time and a whole lot of savings. Let's go over it. Pretty much said and done, you could build your own heat shrink machine for about 450 bucks. I'll put a material list of everything I have here. I'm not going to go through how to build it all in step by step, but I will show it how it was made. I'll add the material list. I'll um, I'll show you. It. I'll demonstrate it. I'll do that first. Uh, I'll demonstrate how it works and show you how to build your own for about $450 in a little bit of time. Now, first, I'm just going to show you how it works. So, you'll put your holder in here, and then you use this induction heater kit and you just slide it over the top and a few seconds it, it heats up um, I will uh, usually I'll use a, a a heat gun just to check the, the heat like that and usually I'll do that just on for on new holders so I can know what temperature usually about 250 that's when it starts swelling enough where the, the tool will slide in I'll lift it up um, and it's as simple as that. Let me go over the power. So the way this unit works, it uses a relay to to turn on the, the, the induction coils. Um, then I also have, this is the, the cooling fans and the water supply. The water supply goes, I just placed it right here. And it's just a little hose that goes in there and it circulates it with a little pump. And then I turn off the main power with a little breaker that's on this right here. So I could turn that on. That's going to turn on the power to the unit. This is the, uh, the transformer. That will kick on. You hear that kicking on. It has a little uh, voltage and, and draw, what is draw screen there. Um, and then here I have this switch. When, you, when I kick that on, you'll, you'll see the water start circulating. The water will circulate. The fans kick on. And then when I turn on the ignition coil, this little light will, will turn on and then it'll start having a power draw. So I'm gonna go over that. So I, I recommend getting some uh, Kevlar gloves. These are just real gloves. They work really good. They're cheap. You can get them anywhere. Um, I think they work for up to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. I put on some gloves. Slide this down like that. Flip the switch. And then usually I'll just monitor this. Get my end mill. I got a, a double end, end mill. I use these for most of my roughing and finishes. Good price. I'll, I'll add that to the description on the, on the link. Okay, I'm about 250 there. I'll see if that's enough. Looks like it is. You just slide this up. Slide this in about where you want it. And usually what I'll do is I'll just take it, let it cool off a little bit. And then once this thing is good enough where it's no longer going to leave, uh, fall out, I'll just take it, dip it in some coolant. Um, I also usually, you could, you could put it in the spindle and just kick on your coolant, but just be careful, uh, if you have a through hole coolant, it'll sometimes blow the tool out if it's not, uh, cooled off enough. But if you, I usually I'll just dip it in the sump of one of my machines. You could have a, a five gallon bucket and just dip it in there and it's cooled off in seconds. That's pretty much it. Um, I just shut that off while I'm talking. So now the ignition, uh, I mean, the coil system is off. Um, the induction coil is off. And this is pretty much done. I'll also go over how to remove a, a tool. I'll go ahead and cool this off. Then I'll, uh, I'll show you how to remove the tool. Okay, now that I have this cooled off, I'm gonna show you how to remove it. This is uh, an option you could do. Usually they'll have a hole through the bottom of that. You could get a, a wire and just shove it in the hole. And when it heats up, it automatically just pop the tool and you know that it's 
it's heated up. You don't have to do that. You can just let it drop and then just pull it. That's just an option. That's why sometimes I like to use the, the through coolant uh, retention studs. I'll just drop it like that so it's lightly sitting on there. And I'll go ahead and power this on. Slide that down. Power this on. And as soon as you see it popping up a little bit, you know it's up to temp, and you can just pull it out. something let it cool off that's good I can pull that off now I'll just insert it back in there because I don't need it out I'll leave it in there get it where I want it maybe somewhere around there let that cool off and take it over and just re-dip it now in the description, I will leave a material list of everything that I have here. I'll also include where to get a, a good place where you could buy these at, a, a, at an affordable price. Um, uh, that double end end mill that I, I like to use, I use it for all my stuff. It's, it's a fraction of the cost because you have two sides on it. And, and um, I'll add everything in, in the description below how you could build your own for under 500 bucks i didn't i want to include the table the table was an extra 80 bucks off amazon i'll, I'll put the link there too but that's not in the 400 dollars um but everything else is even the the heat gun, uh the ir gun everything so we'll i'll go through everything and, and i'll go step by step of how i i won't go quite step by step but i'll, I'll show you the, the build give you some ideas and and how you could build your own it's uh it, it's it's great. I, I, ever since I built this, all I use now is the heat shrink tools and it's, it's so much better. I, I didn't realize how much more tool life you get by using a, uh, a perfectly balanced heat shrink tool versus any other holder. I, this is what I use for all my roughing and I'm seeing so much more tool life. It's definitely worth it. Obviously, you know, the machine is expensive. If you buy a brand new one, you're looking at 5,000, I think for the, the cheapest one that I, I see on the market to, 10,000 or, or, or more, um, but you could easily build your own. You don't have to quite build it like this. I, I went more detail. I you know I want to put it in a case where everything's, you know, touch proof and it's somewhat, you know, safe, but you don't have to go all, all that. No, that's, that's not necessary. You could, you could uh, go without that as well, but you could probably get it, you know, do it for only a few hundred bucks, you know, and, but I'll, it's a good idea and uh, it's definitely definitely worth having if you don't have one around, around the shop you you won't you'll be amazed how much money you'll save in the long run just on on tool wear the the time change over that's another thing when you're dealing with er collets and other stuff you don't realize when you're doing a, a lot of roughing with the uh, end mill you get so much stuff in there I, I spend so much time cleaning out those little chips and this this way you don't have none of that you just pop out the tool it's nice and clean just put a new one in and it, it, it saves you so much time so definitely worth doing it so now I'm gonna go over the the, the, the setup so I'm gonna go ahead and just power this off then I power off this transformer by just using this I use that as a, as a button I, I know it's not intended for me to be a button it's more you know, a surge protection but so this light will take a little while to power off. First of all, I just want to go over the, the basic shell of the, the unit. So the, the Dell computer, all I used it is just for the, the shell. I gutted everything and I used that. I added the, these rails on here. Um, on the top of this, I just put a, a stop plate, just a piece of aluminum and a pulley on there. And this is a counterbalance. It's a little bit underrated. Uh, it's kind of at the max. I should have went a little bigger. It's a, a cheapy one, but kind of just keeps the, the thing counterbalanced. Um, I just use these these chain link uh, rail guides. 
uh, to contain the water cables and whatever electronics is for, for this case. I'll open this up in a little bit and I'll show you what's in what's in there. And um, yeah, and then I'll open up the, the unit and show you there. Uh, I just put this as an extra backup safety stock. That's all that is, is an extra backup safety stop. I could probably remove that because on the on this it has this as well, which is a, it's a stop. Once it hits there, it'll stop there so, so I don't bring the coil in too low and, and damage that. So I opened up the case. I'm not going to take it completely off because I do have the wires run through here. I'll have to take off these screws if I want to take off the case completely. But enough to get, get an idea. So this is a basic uh, induction heating coil that you get off Amazon or eBay. I think I got it off eBay. It was under $300. I believe this was, or 200 something. This was the, the most expensive part of the unit right here. So I just ran it in there. The wires go up in here. Uh, you have the instructions with it. It's pretty simple, nothing complex. It's already pre-made. Uh, the wires go in there. You see the the connections right there you know you have your main power and then there's one for the, the smaller lines control the on and off and the fans and all that stuff and then just the, the cooling system so the the water cool goes in, down into these coils right here and just runs through them just to keep it cool so, while it's running uh, just circulates the water and now let me put that back together i'm going to open this up and show you how i ran it in there Okay, so I had to flip the unit around in order to open this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Take that off and here we go. So pretty much what I did is I ran the, the, the power cable from here. I just ran it through there. If you notice, I, I left the motherboard by gutted everything else. This right here is uh, the water pump. It just runs up in here and then it goes up into here in that railing this is the power supply so I, I just ran it you know, right here I, I pulled out one of the drives or I think it was a floppy disk no there's a floppy disk it was, it was a CD drive or whatever and I just put it in there this is, this is the power supply of the old one I just gutted it and bent it out just to make it flat so I ran this this box as a switch to power on, uh, it, it's, it's just this cable right here. I mean, it's just this little uh, outlet right here, this plug. That's what that is. And that plugs it in to this DC transformer, which goes through here. And that's what powers this up. So this has its own DC transformer. That's why when I power it on, I, I use that switch just to power on the DC transformer, which, get, which gets the fans going and the water pump going. Also, I wanted to show you uh, that I gutted the, the floppy drive and I, and I put this breaker in there. So the breaker actually, it goes in between this and, and you'll, you'll see it in the, in the instructions of the induction, uh, induction coil system because it came as a kit. It, it goes in between this transformer and the actual coil system itself. So this actually powers on when I, when I powered on through, uh, through this cable right here. That's why I use this cable right here and, and just use this test to power on and off. So that will give power to this unit. Then I just hit that to, to activate it and then shut it off. So here I'm just pretty much giving an idea. You don't have to use a computer case. Um, you could use um, maybe 3D printing rails that you could buy off Amazon if you don't want to, if you want to make your own. But this was just a cheap uh, alternative as the idea I had and it, it works great I mean you might say I don't have an old computer I'm sure you could find one on Craigslist or offer up or something and, and you could you could get it together and and you know, it doesn't have to work it does it could be an old model and just just gut it and use that as a, as a base or you could use something altogether differently but it's definitely nice it's nice having like, as I mentioned I didn't realize how handy it is to use uh, heat shrink tools and and it's definitely a good investment if you uh, just wanted to get out a few ideas you know uh, of how you can make your own and if you're halfway handy then this is a, a good option to to do make your own and and save a lot of money and or just go buy one I mean you don't have to do this you could buy a five thousand dollar unit and I think now that using it you, you'll 
definitely. I mean, the holders are not too expensive. The, the heat shrink machine itself is what's most expensive, but it, it'll pay off in just the tools that you save. I, I always thought that heat shrink machines were just for high speed, you know, when you're doing 15,000 RPM plus, you know, but no, it's uh, it's definitely nice to have and and uh, good investment. So that's uh, all I have, and hopefully you find this this video helpful.